If there's one thing I'm known for, it's my personal hygiene. That being said, it has been a bit since I last touched water, so that's exactly what I'll be doing again today. By seeing how fast I can touch water in every Zelda game, starting with the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Okay, so starting off, there's a cave over here, but I doubt there's anything important in there, so we're just gonna make our way up here instead. And while this game does have lots of water, you can't actually touch any of it directly, except for this one super secret waterfall that no one has ever set foot in until ne- Oh! Didn't, uh, didn't expect to see anyone in here. Anyways... On to Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, where we unfortunately have to walk right by this beautiful water here, right in the beginning of the game. But what we can do is make our way through this cave and down this coastline to go for a nice relaxing swim. And now for A Link to the Past, I'm gonna be honest, I did not read this intro text. But I'm gonna guess it said something like, uh, Mr. Mustachio's heading out to the local pool, so we should definitely go join him. Oh, uh, well, I guess this is good enough too. Also, fun fact, did you know that throwing a bush in this water makes a fish leap out of it? Well, now you know. Next up is Link's Awakening, where we're gonna wake up and say hello to Mario over here. I can't wait for your movie coming out soon. Anyways, to find water, we just gotta leave the house and head down to this beautiful, totally safe beach. Now on to my personal favorite Zelda game, the one I consistently come back to over and over again. And nowadays, there's so many cool different ways of playing Ocarina of Time that always keeps it feeling fresh for me. And speaking of keeping it fresh, after the intro cutscenes, we're able to take a little bath in the water near Link's house here. Next is Majora's Mask, a game I still can't believe was only developed in one year. Like, look at these flips! It must have taken 11 out of the 12 months just to program these. Anyways, after being turned into Pinocchio, we can spin around and touch some water right here. On to Oracle of Ages, where after a long intro sequence that includes men being turned into these George Washington potato heads, the extinction of the entire monkey population, and children being turned into- wait. I'm sorry, maybe I'm missing something here, but is this a human? Regardless, after all of that is done, we can touch water in the town here. Oracle of Seasons, as you would expect, also starts with a pretty lengthy intro sequence, this time involving people getting yeeted by a tornado, but thankfully it seems like no monkeys have been harmed in this one. For water, we just need to make our way through the left of town, down to Crab Beach over here. On to The Legend of Zelda Four Swords, the only game where we actually have to deal with some water-touching RNG. The Sea of Trees is a level with many random variations, so how fast we can touch water depends on which version we get. Luckily though, it seems like we got a pretty good one this time. Alright, moving on to Wind Waker, and I can't seem to remember, is there any water in this game? We're just gonna have to keep a close eye on our surroundings and make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, phew, it looks like there's actually some water right here. Next up, we've got the Minish Cap, where unfortunately we can't touch this bucket water. So we'll just head over here, say goodbye to Grandpa, and go outside to meet up with Zelda. And actually, Zelda, you go on ahead. I'll be right behind you. <laughs> Now in Four Swords Adventures, what you want to do is say no to drawing this sword and stand in place for a few seconds and then grab the sword. Very important. And then once we have our three clones, we can push this big rock here and get that synchronized swimming session in. On to Twilight Princess, which is a pretty quick one. I'm not sure if rolling actually makes you faster in this game, but I'm gonna do it anyways until we reach this beautiful horse water over here. Now for the Zelda games on the DS, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are both pretty similar. After a quick intro sequence, there's water right away to jump into and- <sighs> Thank you. 
Next up, we've got Skyward Sword. And you know, sometimes in these games, I like to joke about taking a bath in any type of water I come across. Well, in Skyward Sword, you can literally take a bath in the starting building of the game. Now onto A Link Between Worlds, where at the start of the game- ah! Jeez, relax. I'm up, I'm up. Uh, anyways, we're gonna go pick up this sword so we can steal it and immediately run down here where we can touch water. Triforce Heroes, we get to say hello to our good old fashionable ghost lady friend. And holy quackamole, look at those waterfalls. I wish I could take a swim in those. If this is what Tears of the Kingdom is gonna be like, then sign me up. Uh, anyways, we can touch water up here in the main hub world. Finally, we've got Breath of the Wild, and I was pleasantly surprised to see how many of you in the comments let me know you also have the Wii U version of the game, so shout out to the dozens of us. Once we get in the game, we just gotta pick up our iPad, make our way pantsless through the tunnel, and venture forth to the great land of Hyrule, where there's sure to be bountiful sources of water ripe for touching. I can't wait to set out on our journey and- Oh. Right. And for the final results, here's how long it takes to touch water in every Zelda game, from slowest to fastest. That should fulfill my hygiene quota for a while. Thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of stuff, consider subscribing.